This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Incas. The word evokes images of the magnificence of Machu Picchu, incredible wealth, and a vast empire. The Inca Empire stretched across western South America, from Quito in modern-day Ecuador, then south to Santiago, Chile, all linked by a sophisticated road system. In the 15th century, it was the largest empire in the Americas, and indeed the whole world, and yet it flourished for only a short time, from roughly 1400 to 1533 CE. The Incas were conquerors, architects, engineers, and astronomers. Although they numbered only about 100,000, they ruled over an empire of about 10 million people, made up of many ethnic groups. But all it took was a small group of Spanish conquistadors to bring the whole thing crashing down. Early Inca Rulers In their creation story, the Inca were the direct descendants of the sun god Inti. According to legend, the first Inca ruler, Manco Capac, and his sister wife Mama Okio traveled to the Cusco Valley in southeastern Peru. After defeating the local Chanca people, Manco is then said to have thrown a golden rod into the ground. Where it landed marked the spot of the eventual capital, Cusco. As the creation myth was so tightly intertwined with the story of their rulers, it was believed there were only 13 generations of Inca kings, starting with Manco. He ruled from about 1200 to 1230 CE. The kings were called Sapa Inca, meaning mighty or only Inca. There were only two dynastic lines, the Huron and the Hana. The Huron kings did little to expand their lands beyond the Cusco Valley. In 1350, the Hanan dynasty came to power under Inca Roca. He had supported the murder of his father after a family dispute. While Inca Roca took on neighboring peoples during his reign, his motives were more about plundering than gaining new territory. It would be almost another 80 years before the Inca Empire truly began. The Empire Rises Viracocha Inca came to power in 1410, declaring that he would conquer half the world. He was the first to rule rather than just pillage the lands he had taken over. In 1438, however, he was forced to flee Cusco after coming under attack from the rival Chanca. His son, Pachacuti, said that he would not abandon the city during the crisis and led his forces to victory. Despite this, Viracocha could not forgive his son's defiance, ordering his death. However, Pachacuti prevailed once again when his father abdicated in his favor. Although some 100 years earlier, Inca astronomers had predicted the end of their people, Pachacuti refused to believe this grim forecast. He began an era of conquest. Because of his efforts, the Inca Empire covered almost the entire western side of South America within three generations. The Incas took a three-pronged approach to expansion. Diplomacy, fortification, and logistics. Negotiations with those they intended to conquer always began diplomatically with the offer of trade, monetary rewards, high-ranking jobs, and influential marriages. Inca forces would put on a good show of intimidation tactics without actually attacking. This gentle siege usually led to capitulation. As the empire expanded, Fortifications, garrisons, and storage depots were built, especially in areas where the charm and intimidation offensive had not been as successful. Sometimes, people in these so-called hotspots were resettled in order to subdue them. The Inca army comprised conscripts from all conquered peoples, who had to make a tribute of themselves as soldiers. In times of war, they were led into battle by their own lords, ensuring loyalty. En route to battle, they were provided with food, clothing, and weapons from the storehouses built along main roads. A victorious Inca emperor would walk on his enemies' heads in Cusco's main plaza. Sometimes heads were fashioned into drinking vessels, or flayed skin would make ceremonial drums. Soldiers of all classes would be rewarded for acts of bravery. Emperor Pachacuti also found time to rebuild much of Cusco, including the important Temple of the Sun. He called for constructing the Road of the Inca, 
which stretched like a binding force from Quito to Chile. Many archaeologists also believe that he built Machu Picchu as a personal estate. The empire continued to flourish under Pachacuti's son, Tupac Inca Yapanqui. In his 22 years on the throne, Tupac added lands to the north along the Andes up through to Ecuador. The city of Quito became a favorite of his, and he brought in architects to rebuild it. His son, Huayna Capac, was one of the last great Inca leaders. In his 34-year-long reign, he made Quito the second Inca capital, built strongholds and observatories, and oversaw an empire at the zenith of its size and might. By the time he died in 1527, though, the stage was being set for its eventual fall. Diseases brought by the Spanish conquistadors were already present at the royal court. The emperor himself died of either smallpox or measles. His death unleashed a civil war between his sons, Huascar and Atahualpa, as they fought to be sole ruler of the whole empire, not just the half they each had inherited. When Atahualpa defeated and imprisoned his half-brother, the new emperor had other rivals murdered and punished those who had taken Huascar's side. He may have even ripped out his enemies' hearts and forced their supporters to eat them. The civil war was most unfortunately timed, as it created fractures in the empire and caused a distraction from the oncoming Spanish. It also allowed for those who wanted to end Inca domination to side with the European invaders. The Spanish Conquistadors and the Fall of the Empire The conquistadors who ended the Inca Empire were not a vast army. There were only about 168 men, but they came with weapons and tactics that the Inca had never seen before. Toledo steel swords and lances, guns, European armor, and cavalry. Many were filled with a fierce desire for fame, glory, and gold. Others fought in the name of the Christian God, the Holy Mother Church, and for their ruler, King Charles V. The man who led this small force was Francisco Pizarro. Born illegitimate in Trujillo, Spain in the 1470s, he knew that he would need to make his own fortune in the New World. Decades later, in 1532, he was battle-hardened and forging into the Inca Kingdom. As he made his way, he received gifts and an invitation to visit the emperor. The Spanish didn't realize this was the traditional threat issued to an enemy. Atahualpa's spies relayed information about the invaders as they made their way to Cajamarca in northern Peru. The conclusion was these strangers were not gods. They got tired, sick, some even died. Gods didn't die. Pizarro issued an invitation to Atahualpa soon after reaching Cajamarca. He hadn't made up his mind as to what his next move would be. Demand that the Inca leader swear allegiance to the Spanish throne? An ambush? Or maintain the pretense that the Spanish were a benevolent presence? Just to be on the safe side, his armed men hid around the plaza, ready to act. Atahualpa made a dramatic entrance with thousands of courtiers and unarmed soldiers. The papal envoy presented him with a Bible, explaining that now he would need to follow the true Catholic faith and pay tribute to the Holy Roman Emperor. Atahualpa was curious about this new religion, but quickly grew angered when he couldn't understand the writing. He threw the holy book on the ground, giving Pizarro a reason to attack. Cannons went off and the cavalry charged, overwhelming the crowd. Less than two hours later, some 7,000 Inca lay slaughtered in the plaza, and Atahualpa was under arrest. The Inca leader, realizing that the Spanish were after riches, offered gold and silver-filled rooms. Pizarro took the money and then put Atahualpa on trial. He was found guilty of, among other charges, treason for ordering the death of his half-brother, Huascar. On July 26, 1533, he himself was executed by the Spanish. Shortly before, he converted to Christianity, so he would not be burnt at the stake as a heretic. The conquistadors installed a puppy king, Manco Inca Yapanqui. Within a few years, however, he had grown tired of co-ruling with the Spanish. He escaped Cusco and raised an army of up to 400,000 men. A 10-month-long siege of the capital failed and his men deserted him to return to their farms. 
Manco led his remaining followers into the remote jungles of Vilcabamba, where he founded a short-lived Neo-Inca state. In 1572, the last independent Inca ruler, Tupac Amaru, died. The Inca Empire had fallen after flaming so brightly, yet so briefly. The jungles covered many of the remote sites for centuries. Palaces and sacred sites were converted into Catholic churches and other colonial buildings. Waves of epidemics, along with infighting amongst the Spanish and war against the remaining Inca resistance, caused a loss of 50% of the indigenous population within the first century after conquest. And yet, the Inca Empire persists in the memories of the many people its territories touched. Quechua, the language of the Inca, is still spoken by 8 million people who live in the central Andes. Ancient rituals, such as the greeting of the sun on the June solstice, continue, and archaeologists are still uncovering information about this intriguing people. To discover more about the Incas, then check out our book, Incas, a captivating guide to the history of the Inca Empire and civilization. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.